they started beating, punching me first, then kicking me. We're at a heightened level of aggression. I remember looking into that face. I remember looking at that mohawk in those eyes. I kicked him in the forehead and he was out. The film basically follows the journey of, of both Tim and I um, through the, the, when I was thrown out at 13, left to live on the streets of Hollywood, and while out there was attacked by 10 or 12 neo-Nazi skinheads who believed that they had killed me, um, which was their intent. And the journey off the streets, eventually making it here to the museum where I managed the museum, and coming face to face with one of the perpetrators from that night 26 years earlier, being Tim, and our journey to and through like that redemption and forgiveness and compassion and understanding. In those last moments of looking up and watching these 14 guys with razor blades glued to the front of their boots, high-fiving each other, and they were congratulating each other. They believed with everything that was within them that they had accomplished the goal of killing that kid in the alley who had never spoken to them, had never said anything to them. The words and what I saw were far more painful throughout my life than the boots and the blades. When you're dealing with a story like this that happened, uh, you know, the crux of the story happened 25 years ago, uh, or, or 30 years ago, I think, at that point, or 32 years ago at that point. Um, it's uh, hard to sort of tell a story. There's not really a lot of archival footage. There, these guys didn't have pictures of themselves because they were both sort of out at a young age. and. Uh, Matthew was out on the street, Tim was in sort of this punk, uh, Nazi punk lifestyle. So it was hard, you know, we had to figure out ways to tell the story without having that footage to actually tell the story. Um, so that was, that was a challenge for the sort of the first half. And then, you know, and then the other challenge was just trying to really uh, dig deeper with these guys and build some trust and, and really explore this process of forgiveness that they had been going through for six or seven years at that point. Here is where Tim and I ran into each other again, which is, you know, I always say there's no coincidence uh, for, for this story. There's just, it's just, it was meant to be. He was here a few years before I came, and then when I came on the scene, he was working and I had conversations with him for several months. I did not physically recognize Tim. It was through a conversation we were having across the street, actually, and talking about past lives and where we hung out, and that's where the story of the hamburger stand came up. And that's when we realized who the other one uh, was to each other. The first time an apology takes place in our story, which begins the journey of forgiveness for me, happened in this room here while Tim was doing a presentation. I walked in, and he was nearing the end, and as he ended, he turned, looked at me, and just simply said a very simple, I'm sorry. And that's where the story of forgiveness really takes place, because that's where that journey began. I had an idea going in that I wanted to tell their full story and, and, and really look at what their forgiveness process was and what they went through and their inner struggle and all that. So until um, I started doing the interviews and, and until I felt comfortable enough or actually they felt comfortable enough with me to open up uh, and really share their whole story, I think then I kind of started feeling like, yeah, we, we, we have something here. These guys are really... Um, telling me everything that, that, that you would want to hear and maybe they haven't talked about before. You know, I went through most of my life thinking that, that, that I had killed this person, or at least not knowing. Tell you the truth, if, I don't know if I could forgive somebody the way he's been able to forgive me. I think it's possible for anybody to change. It is not easy. It, is, it takes a willingness to, to do the work that it takes. For him to do what he did and to change his life, I respect the courage that it took him, um, the challenges that he had to face, the dangers of leaving the movement. Um, and so in, in, in all of that, in, in talking to him about all of that is, in seeing that change, I actually realize there's things in my life I can change. I don't refer to myself as a victim. I, I'm, you know, once that journey of forgiveness began and I was able to walk through it, I feel more of a survivor of something, but I think that there's a lot of people out there um, who feel that they're just trapped within whatever their situation is. Um, and I love the fact that he focused more on there is an answer. It is your own journey, but there is a possibility.